Welcome back. We have Jimmy with us today in the laundry bin. It's one of his favorite places to hang out. So Jimmy's going to be paying very close attention to our math lesson today because he cares deeply about learning ratios, just like you do. Hopefully you have your new volume two workbook. Um, and we are going to start on page 257. Um, so ratios are um, another way of comparing one number to another. And the rules for working with ratios are very much like the rules for working with fractions. For example, we're going to be talking about finding equivalent ratios. Works exactly the same way as finding equivalent fractions. So, um, even though it's a new concept, there's a lot of the same kind of skills that um, apply to this kind of work. So let's take a look at page 257. Jimmy, are you paying attention? Mm -hmm. All right, so we have the best of the 90s record with uh, pop songs and R&B songs. And if you look, there are nine pop songs and one, two, three, four, five, six R&B songs. So here it says, how can you describe the relationship between the number of pop songs and the number of R&B songs on the album? Okay, so there's nine pop and six R&B. A way to express that as a ratio would be nine and then a semicolon, six. Or you could also express it like a fraction, nine, over six, um, or you could write it in words like this, nine to six. Those are three perfectly acceptable ways of expressing a ratio. And then it says here though, how can you describe the relationship? We've been doing that a lot with variables, right? So nine to six, if I reduce that, if I treat it like a fraction and reduce it, I get three over two or three to two. Now, if I want to just write a sentence, use, just using words to describe, I would say there's one and a half as many pop songs as R&B songs. Or I could say there are three pop songs for every two R&B songs. Those would be two different ways I could describe how they're related to each other. Okay? Now, let's look at this bar graph. How does the bar diagram represent the relationship between the number of pop songs and the number of R&B songs? Okay, so if you look at the bar graph, it's divided into sections, and there are three sections for pop and two sections for R&B. So that means that each section stands for three songs because three plus three plus three equals nine, three plus three equals six. So that's another way that you could represent that ratio. Jimmy, stop taking a bath and pay attention. My tail dirty. Oh well. Now, focus on math practices, please. Another album has two pop songs and 10 R&B songs. I'd rather have that album, by the way. Draw a bar diagram that you could use to represent the relationship between the number of pop songs and the number of R&B songs. So I'm just gonna, like they did their bar graph, I'm gonna make one down here. And I had one square for pop and one, two, three, four, five squares for R and B. So what does that mean? It means that each one of these squares represents two songs. So there's one for pop, which only has two songs, and five for R and B because there are 10 songs all together or five groups of two. All right, so it's a good visual for representing the relationship between those two values. Okay, let's look at page 258. Yay, dogs and cats. 
Okay, Tom's Pet Service takes care of dogs and cats. Currently, there are more dogs than cats. Compare the number of cats to the number of dogs. Then compare the number of cats to the total number of pets at Tom's Pet Service. So there's 14 cats, there's 17 dogs. What's the total number of pets? 14 plus 17 is 31. Okay, so there's 31 pets total. Now, ratio is a relationship in which for every certain X units of one quantity, there are Y units of another quantity. A ratio can be written three ways. This is what I was talking about on the previous page. So X to Y, X semicolon Y, or X over Y. Now, each of the quantities in these are called terms. Remember when we were learning about terms in equations and expressions? A term in that case meant any group that was separated by a um, subtraction sign or an addition sign. But when we're talking about ratios, we mean each number in the ratio is its own term. Okay, so let's take a look at this. The ratio to compare the number of cats to the number of dogs is 14 to 17, or 14 semicolon 17. You would read this 14 to 17, or 14 to 17 this way like a fraction. And here is a nice little bar diagram that shows that relationship. Cats to dogs. Um, now, in terms of the order of the numbers, they said cats to dogs. So cats is gonna be the first number, dogs will be the second number. If they said compare the number of dogs to cats, you would write it the other way and write the number of dogs first and then cats. Okay, use a ratio to compare the number of cats to the total number of pets. So there's 14 cats and 31 pets total. You could write it these three ways. You could show it this way. Here's the number of cats, the 14, and then the total number of pets is a bar for the cats and the bar for the dogs, okay? Now say it with me. Try it. You didn't say it with me. Say it with me. Try, Try it. it. Thanks, cameraman. Okay. What are three ways to write the ratio of the number of dogs to the total number of pets? So you could write it this way, 17 to 31, 17 over 31, or 17 semicolon 31, which when you really read that, it's 17 to 31. All right, convince me. Is the ratio of dogs to cats the same as the ratio of cats to dog? No, the order is different. If it says cats to dogs, you're gonna say the number of cats first and the number of dogs second. If it says dogs to cats, you're gonna say the number of dogs first and the number of cats second. Okay, let's look at the next page. All right. So use a bar diagram to solve the ratio problem. The ratio of footballs to soccer balls at a sporting goods store is five to three. So what does that mean? It means for every five soccer balls, or footballs, excuse me, for every five footballs, there are three soccer balls. Now it says the store has 100 footballs in stock. How many soccer balls does it have? So it's not saying there are exactly five footballs in the store and exactly three soccer balls. What it's saying is for every five footballs, there are three soccer balls. And as it happens, there are 100 footballs. So let's take a look at how to figure that out. If there's 100 footballs, how many soccer balls are there? Here's a bar diagram to show the ratio five to three. Use five boxes for footballs. And notice there's a one in each one of those boxes. And three boxes for soccer balls. There's a one in each one of those boxes. So you can see the ratio represented there. Now, 
use the same diagram to represent 100 footballs. So see the difference? Instead of putting one in each box, they put 20 in each box. And where did they get the 20? Well, they said, okay, there's five boxes there and there's 100 footballs. So if I wanna have each one of those boxes represent one fifth of the number of footballs, then I'll put 20 in each. That way, when you add them all together, it equals 100 and it's still divided into five sections, which makes it easy to show the ratio. So just like there was a one in these boxes, we put 20s up here, that means we're gonna put 20s here also. So if we put 20 in each one of these, then we get this, 100 footballs, and how many soccer balls? 20, 40, 60. So the answer to that question is, the sporting goods store has 60 soccer balls. Okay, we'll do more problems like this, so don't worry if it's not crystal clear yet. Here's another example. Use a double number line diagram to solve a ratio problem. So Chen can ride his bike three miles in 15 minutes. At this rate, how long will it take Chen to ride his bike 18 miles? All right, here is a double number line. The top number line represents the number of miles, okay? The bottom number line represents the number of minutes. Now notice that the numbers on the two different number lines are different. We've got 0, 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18 on top for the miles. For the minutes one, we've got 0, 15, 30, 45, 60, 75, 90. And you can see why they broke it up the way they did because remember the problem said that Chen can ride uh, his bike three miles in 15 minutes. So do you see how three and 15 line up with each other? And then they made the number line in intervals like that. They counted by 15 minutes up here and they counted by three miles up here. So that this shows every 15 minutes, another three miles. So it's three to 15, six to 30, nine to 45, 12 to 60, and so on. So if you use that number line and then you wanna find out how many how many miles he can ride in 90 minutes, or you wanna find out how long it will take him to ride 18 miles, go to 18 miles right here, and then how does that match up? 90 minutes, okay? All right, now say it with me. Try, Try it! it. <laughs> Jen's friend, Elisa, can ride her bike two miles in seven minutes. Well, that's pretty fast. Use a bar diagram or a double number line to diagram to find out how long it would take Elisa to ride 10 miles if she rides at the same pace or the same rate. That's gonna become really important, that same rate business. Because what if Elisa can ride, is riding you know, two miles and seven minutes for a while and then she slows way down and then she speeds back up again and then she slows way down. Well, in that case, this kind of work wouldn't be able to answer that question. So we are assuming that she's continuing at her same rate. All right, I decided to use a double number line to solve this one. And you can see I lined up the values like it told me in here, it said two miles, or uh, yeah, two miles and seven minutes. Four miles would be 14 minutes, six miles is 21 minutes and so forth. Now, what was the question again? Oh yeah, how long would it take Elisa to ride 10 miles? So since I've already set up my number line, I look at the 10 and what does it match up to? 35 miles. Uh, <laughs> no, 35 minutes. I was like, dang, she can ride 35 miles in 10 minutes? No, she can ride 10 miles in 35 minutes. Okay? All right, let's look at the next page. We're gonna start doing some actual work here. Okay, key concept. A ratio compares two quantities. We kind of know that now. A ratio can be written three ways. We know that also x to y, 
x to y or x over y. Ratios can be represented using bar diagrams and double number line diagrams. We know that. Um, so apples to oranges is 2 to 3. See two oranges, three apples. Uh, the ratio of miles to minute is 2 miles in 45 minutes. Okay. So now we've got some do you understand and do you, you know how questions. So for this first one, what is a mathematical way to compare quantities? Hint, it's what we've been talking about this whole time. Number two, what are two different types of comparisons that a ratio can be used to make? So by this, they mean, think about the um, dog and cat pet sitting service. There were two ways that we compared numbers there. See if you can remember what those are. You could also look back. And then here, a science classroom has five turtles and seven frogs. That's awesome. I want to be in that room. What is the ratio of frogs to total animals? Notice it doesn't say the ratio of frogs to turtles. Okay, and then down here we have Ty is making trail mix with five, no, three cups of nuts for every four cups of granola. See that ratio? If Ty has six cups of nuts, how many cups of granola should he use? So remember how to do these ones? It's a little bit like the football basketball one. Three cups for every four, but he's got six cups. Okay, see how you do on those and um, unpause the video when you're ready to check your answers. Okay, ta-da! A ratio, of course, that's what we've been talking about this whole time. A ratio can be written three ways, with a semicolon as a fraction or with two. Okay, reasoning. What are two different types of comparisons that a ratio can be used to make? Ta-da! Part to part or part to whole? A little bit like this problem here. You could compare the number of turtles to frogs. That would be part to part. Or you could compare a part to the whole, like seven frogs to the total number of animals, which would be 12. Okay? All right. Now for this one, ta-da! Here are three ways that you could show the ratio of frogs to total animals. You could say five to 12 this way, five to 12 this way, or five to 12 that way. Now Ty and his granola making adventures. Ta-da! If there are three cups of nuts for every four cups of granola, but he has six cups of nuts, that means he should add eight cups of granola. Twice as many nuts, twice as much granola. Make sense? All right, let's look at the do you know how part. In five through seven, use three different ways to write a ratio for each comparison. So you gotta show all three of the different ways there are to show a ratio. A sixth grade basketball team has three centers, five forwards, and six guards. Now it asks these questions about that. Show the ratio of forwards to guards, the ratio of centers to total players, and the ratio of guards to centers. Then we'll do this other problem here. The ratio of blue cards to green cards is two to five. I made these arrows there because I could say blue is two and green is five. There are eight blue cards. So again, this is like the football basketball one or the trail mix one, where it gives you the ratio and then it gives you a different amount for one of the uh, amounts in the ratio. Complete the diagram and explain how you can find the number of green cards. We know there's eight cards, eight blue cards. How many green cards are there if the ratio is two to five? Okay, so do those problems and then come back when you're ready to check your answers. Okay, so forwards to guards, five to six. You could also write it like that, 
or like that. Centers to total players, 3 to 14 like that, or 3 to 14 like that, or 3 to 14 like that. Remember also, you're showing the first thing that they say is the first number, okay? Now, guards to centers, six to three, also like that and like that. Now, if the ratio of blue cards to green cards is two to five and there are eight blue cards, well, if I've got two sections to represent all the blue cards, then I'm gonna put four in each section. And if I'm putting four in each section here, I'm putting four in each section here, because they're equal, right? So that means that there are eight blue cards divided by two is four. So four is in each box. <coughs> and the number of green cards is 4, 8, 12, 16, and 20. Okay, so welcome to ratios. Um, I hope that feels good, makes sense, and you can see the connection between ratios and fractions. All right, I will see you next time. Bye.